Oh. Hmm. Let's be careful here. Oh, there's something behind me. Shit. Uh, hmm. No, I, I, I cannot take two on half health. Ah, <sighs> good angry. Listen to its last complaint. Wait. The largest chunk of the Gantankri still lives. They can be slow to die. Stubbornness, perhaps, or the sluggish journey of signals along their calcified nerves. Ah, oh, strange. Uh. So you can do a lot of things here. Prize precious stones from its carapace? While it's still alive? No. Let's listen to its last complaint. Its parting grumble is bitter and mournful. Your crew share tales of the cantankery to distract them from the noise. The cantankery emits a long, flatulent eruption. Sounds as if someone had punctured a hippo. <laughs> An engineer clears his throat. Once a herd of cantankery mob a scorn fluke. Must have been two dozen of them. So furious they impaled themselves on its spines to get at it. Got a sky story. Damn. Grumpy cantankeries. Okay, so what am I going to do here, huh? Like... Do I run deeper into the area where the luster mines might be, or do I just go back? All the way back to New Winchester? I'm already so far out here, though. No. Sitting on my bat, looking for the luster mines, and I'm just going as fast as I can away. Is that what you found? Ah, just another one of those things. The luster mines have to be pretty close. Yes, there it is. That must be it. Oh, I'm glad I pushed on. You bribe your bat with moths until it tells you what it discovered. The crew sees the snow on Lustrum, then stares at the rat brigade. The smiles hide thoughts of earmuffs. Oh, God. No, don't kill the rat brigade to get earmuffs. Jesus. Oh. I wasn't quite sure if that was on this layer or, like, below me. Oh, what a cool looking place. That is, oh, my cat's roping the microphone. Sorry if that's loud. God, she's such a cute cat though. I gotta pet this cat. Um, anyway, this, this place looks incredible. See all the little, uh, I think that's like smoke coming out of the chimneys from those little buildings. And you can see it gets darker and darker deep down. There's like some encampment tents or something down there. Oh, this place is really cool. A new port captain. Her crew crowd to the windows. I am going to get in here and then pet my cat. I'll be right back. Hey. The frantic, hustling heart of Lustrum, crammed with prospectors, peddlers, and purveyors of essential and occasionally legal services. Most business takes place here, unless you are a dreamer seeking your fortune on the claim fields. I'm so excited to check this place out. Also, I'm going to make so much money here, not exactly right now, but remember, I have a prospect to deliver nine munitions, and I have all nine in my bank, actually. 
They'll pay 135 sovereigns each, so that's going to be over easily over a thousand. I might just buy a ship really soon. Let's explore Lustrum. What was briefly a modest, pleasant town on the mother of mountains now runs on increasingly desperate dreams of riches. Ah, yes, the mining life. Always obsessed with striking it rich. Fools sell their futures for the chance to mine years from the mountain's frozen sides. Sharper mines sell pickaxes, supplies, and the promise of a warm bed at the end of a bitter day's work. Let's get a poor report. Hours like the new gold in Albion and the Reach, while Lustrum's fortunes remain, it is of interest to many. So much for the quiet retirement village that used to be here. The rush of prospectors has ripped the civility from the place as efficiently as the geodes from the mountainside. The scars that remain are no less vivid. Fewer and fewer prospectors return with geodes of ours, and the cost of processing them off-site grows every day. Still, for now, Lustrum thrives, and offers the promise of riches for any lucky or industrious miner willing to come and risk everything in the snow and the mud. Oh, I forgot we're looking for the runaway acrobat here. Oh my god, there's so much to do. Uh, well, let's start with the runaway acrobat. A bleary-eyed prospector has seen someone of their description. They're attempting to make a living as a miner. An acrobat turned miner? Weird. You find the acrobat fast asleep in the camp outside the mine. Their clothes are soiled by coal dust. It takes some effort to shake them awake. Once conscious, they push your hand away. You're here to take me back to the circus, aren't you? Good luck to the miners without me. Who will they send into the upper crevices now? They burrow back into their blankets. So it goes. Just give me 15 more minutes to rest and I'll join you. <laughs> so they were using the acrobat to get into hard to reach places. Need someone small and flexible and nimble. I feel overwhelmed with choices. Tea shop? Seek a claim of your own? How much does that cost? Oh, just 10? It will cost 100 sovereigns to stake a claim if you find one. Hmm. The Windward Company is here. Hmm. The poison air coming from Windward's processing factory is only the latest insult. Tensions between the company and the Tackities grows by the day. I'm sure they wouldn't like to see me. Let's explore Lustrum. This port started as an enclave of well-off Londoners, hoping to absorb the youthful energy of the mountain. Then the prospectors arrived. Oh. Oh, it was an enclave. I, I get it. Okay, so it was an enclave of rich people that wanted to be here to live forever. Well, I don't exactly feel bad about a bunch of rich assholes being bothered by prospector assholes just looking to get rich quick. Fuck them all. A tale of two ports. Your boots crunch through the snow, clean and bright, lacking the lingering sadness of... Actually, hold on a second. I don't think all the prospectors are assholes. I'm sure a lot of them are very greedy people that probably started with a very large amount of money and were already pretty well off and just hoping to get richer. But I'm sure quite a few of the prospectors are also people that are just desperate and hoping to make money because they're poor as hell. Probably. You need a certain amount of money to actually get into this, though. Because you gotta get here and you'd have to, like, stake a claim, right? But yeah, I'm sure not all the prospectors are assholes. Some of them, some of them are just desperate. Your boots crunch through the snow, clean and bright, lacking the lingering sadness of London's ammonia suffused lacquer. The townspeople nod politely at you. A distinguished visitor, but avert their eyes from the grizzled prospectors and get-rich-quick merchants who have taken over their slice of civilization on the mountain. They wait impatiently for a day when the mountain has nothing more to offer, and the uncouth invaders finally leave, hoping that something still remains when all of value has finally been plundered. Let's visit the Hanged Man Pub. An embossed plaque under the hastily painted sign proclaims this miner's pub as the former Empress's Grace Guesthouse. 
Its once fine mahogany tables and chairs are now little but sawdust on the floor, and a lingering smell in the fireplace. Irritable miners jockey for space by insufficient fireplaces. They pay for the overpriced drinks with their dwindling coins or lowest quality hours. A few fortunates bear the mark of minor success. The baby soft hands that come from regularly handling unseasoned hours. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So if you handle unseasoned hours a lot, I guess the youthfulness, the hours rub off on your hands and they look really young. There's a figure in the corner. Speak of the wary prospector. Buy a round of drinks. How much is that? Oh, just 10? Yeah, sure. Prospectors are not trusting people. Every new arrival is more competition. But while the drinks last, you're welcome to sit at their table. An elderly prospector and a hulking, scarred miner move aside to give you just enough space to squeeze in. Everyone seems to be talking shop. More importantly, everyone at this table appears to have had at least some luck out here. Ah, what do we learn, want to learn about? The geodes, the mountain, mining, recent troubles. Let's listen about recent troubles. Mining such treacherous terrain has its difficulties. It's them windward bastards, ain't it? Didn't mind them sending around their netties. Honest competition. Lads enjoy the distraction. But did you see the state of the Parsifal lad? The miners huddle. That word windward. That's them night hunters they talk of. Tearing folks up with their claws and teeth and eating them whole. All you see is a black rush before your eyes and then snap. Netties? Distraction? Parsifal lad? I have no idea what they're talking about. Night Hunters. Okay, so yeah, if I want all the different bits of gossip, I gotta pay them each time. I mean, that's fine. Ten, ten sovereigns. That's nothing right now. I'll keep buying them drinks. Maybe at some point they'll all be so drunk they won't be able to tell me anything. Uh, let's listen to gossip about geodes. To hear the miners talk, you'd think the rocks were alive. I mean, wait, aren't they alive? Like, I thought at one point when I was handling or taking on board some unseasoned hours. Yeah, wasn't there an event where, like, a barrel of unseasoned hours broke? And I think it mentioned something about the the hours, like, talking or something or grumbling or... I don't know, it almost seems like they're alive. One prospector tells of finding a geode in the shape of a lion, apparently a mark of great fortune. Another talks of chipping away in silence so as not to startle the hours inside. Another mentions how cold the geodes are. As difficult as it is to work, a layer of thick ice underneath the snow is considered a sign of a good claim. They all agree that the mining day must begin with a libation, a cup of moonshine poured to the mountain's good graces. If it rumbles, it is said the offering is accepted. If purple wisps appear over the claim afterwards, its prospector is blessed indeed. Let's listen to gossip about the mountain. Might have an idea on where to look for a claim. Those newcomers reckon they've got it made digging in the mud. Don't realize the geodes is cold, do they? Hardens the muck. If you're not breaking your back, you're not doing it right. Serves them right for thinking a claim just out of town's going to pay out. And lastly, gossip about mining. Look for the trees, a drunk prospector warns you. Not too tall, the young ones. The hours keep them young. Lots of trees, no good. Just enough trees and scrub to break the ice. That's a sign of a proper vein. Let's approach the figure in the corner. It sits wrapped in a dusty, disintegrating shroud, nursing a flagon that never goes to where its lips presumably are. Whoa, look at this. Oh, damn it. Look at that picture on the left. What are they? I'm intrigued. 
The cloaked figure beckons to you. Valuables for sale, it wheezes, its voice throaty and high-pitched. Exchange for buried time, yes, please? It offers unusual relics in exchange, or a few rusted coins I would barely buy transport to anywhere else. Talk to Mr. Pennies, that's their name, Mr. Pennies? That's creepy. We could do a lot with him. Oh. Oh. Introduce the short-sighted cryptozoologist. I barely remember them. Where did I even pick them up? I guess they wanted to meet them. I have almost no memory of that. She's hunting for something. Take her to Lustrum. Yeah, not much information. I don't remember where he picked them up, but uh, let's introduce them. The cryptozoologist beams with excitement. Oh, I have so many questions. Where does your species come from? How did you learn to speak English? What do you call yourselves? I mean, it, it can't be curator in your own language, right? What's the difference between a master and just a mister? No offense. Oh, what do you look like under that cloak? Are there female curators? She lifts the now terrified looking Mr. Penny's hood and squeals. Oh, you're adorable. How do you fit those wings in there? And you leave her to it. She seems happy enough. Mr. Penny's perhaps not. Oh, wait, they're adorable. They have wings. I want to see them. What do they look like? Oh. 100 sovereigns and an otherworldly artifact. Let's just talk to them. The miners try to ignore it, but it must have some reason to bother setting up its stall here. Everything ends, the figure wheezes. Even law. For everything, a reckoning. Need help. Need hours. Postpone reckoning. Shadows with thistle ropes and broken wings waiting on riverbank to catch final breath. Everything dies. Must outlast. We trade, yes? Trade hours? We trade hours now, yes? Good quality merchandise. Ah, right. I've got barrels of unseasoned hours that I picked up on a deal at Carillon. That's handy. So they're collecting unseasoned hours. They're collecting time because they want to postpone the reckoning. Hmm. Are they just trying to live longer themselves, or are they trying to postpone some more wide-reaching reckoning that they're talking about? Oh, I can exchange the hours for money. How much? A pitiful exchange for only the most piteous. Desperate as it is, the cloaked figure appears surprised that one such as yourself would make such a trade. It doesn't say how much. I mean, it says it's piteous, so not much. Would this do anything, though? Like, is, I, like, is it just if you're really, 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 really desperate and need the money, or could it maybe trigger something? I'm gonna try it. One sovereign? Oh, Jesus. That's basically donating it. You provide a small sample of hours for sale. A few seconds at most. Penny's closet for... Uh, claws for it with a blackened, leathery appendage. Mr. Penny's shakes as it sniffs at the little cigar box and the sprinkling of calcified thyme within. Yes, it whines. We'll do. We'll suffice. Okay, I'm, I'm imagining that it looks really cute under there, but the way it talks and its name... I mean, it sounds like it, like the fucking clown in the sewer or something. Mr. Penny's, uh, blackened leathery appendage, and then, yes, <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I don't think that triggers anything at all. I mean, an otherworldly artifact is probably worth way more than a barrel of unseasoned hours. I don't know what to do with the, the artifacts, though, I've never used any. Mr. Penny's pushes a selection of trinkets across his table. A dried chorister bee's wing. A watchful curio. Nothing special. Hmm. These little offerings have some promise, though. 
Sure. You provide a fragment of hours for sale, a few seconds at most. Oh, that's the same thing that it said before. Will do, will suffice. Yeah, I'll trade them all. Oh. Can only get one. Uh, otherworldly artifact. Okay. Anything new to talk about? No. Let's return to the miners. Let's speak with a wary prospector. He's tired of the mud, sick of the snow. He's going home just as soon as he can find someone to take on his claim. This will purchase you a claim that can, at best, be described as adequate. You may have better or worse luck seeking out your own. Hmm. 200 sovereigns, that's a bit pricey. I think I'd rather find my own. And I don't know if taking that that claim will mean that I can't take any others. Like, am I only allowed one claim at a time? Okay, well, we are done with the pub. <laughs> and now there's a million other things to do. This place is huge. Let's go to Murgatroyd's Golden Tea Shop. Some some come for the fine teas, others for the carefully prepared manila folders underneath the counter. All agree that the scones are divine. An oasis of London civility and culture in a town with a little of either. Millicine Murgatroyd stands proudly behind the display of fresh scones and slightly yellowing cream buns. At small wooden tables, successful prospectors and their significant others welcome themselves to the world of the... Nouveau... I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, with a spot of afternoon tea, pinky fingers stand proud and erect from Bonachina cups covertly topped with moonshine. <laughs> covertly topped up with moonshine? Oh, so the prospect... <laughs> so the prospectors are like pretending to be fancy, drinking like really fancy tea at a nice tea shop with their pinky fingers raised, but they spiked their Tea with moonshine? Tea and moonshine, that sounds... I mean, I've never had moonshine, but that sounds horrible. <laughs> That's hilarious. So I wonder if this tea shop was... This tea shop, I bet, was probably set up before the prospectors came. Because, like, who would make a tea shop for prospectors? That's not... You'd make a tavern, right? Not a lot of prospectors are going to be into tea. So this was probably made for the rich people before the prospectors came. Let's enjoy a lovely cup of tea. Five sovereigns. A reminder of proper civilization is a thing to be cherished, especially out here in the Reach. Millicene's maids hurry around, serving a clientele more used to bellowing at bartenders than sitting politely with exquisitely cut cucumber sandwiches. Eventually, it is your turn to be served. You're invited to choose your preferred blend. Ooh. Indulgence Blend, Eleutherian Gold, or Empress's Favor. So the gold looks like tea with the occasional sparkle. The Indulgence Blend is from the Blue Kingdom. Ooh. I don't know, that's just... For some reason that amuses me. Drinking tea from the Blue Kingdom. As aboard our ship we have somebody... Uh, we have an undead stolen from their kingdom. <laughs> or, I, I shouldn't say stolen, right? I think they want to be there and they want me to take them to London, but smuggled from their kingdom is probably a better way to put it. Let's drink that. A tea for the true connoisseur. A taste of dust swept from the darkest corners of a sepulcher. sepulcher. It is best served with a drop of milk, ideally on the very edge of turning. You sip gently. Between sips, a bit of a sugared biscuit to take away the edge. Reduced your terror. I'm sorry, that is fascinating tea. Also, that sounds incredibly disgusting. It's for the true connoisseur, so yeah, it looks like you need a pretty complex palate to appreciate it. Because this sounds like it tastes like shit. It tastes of dust swept from the darkest corner of a sepulcher. Sepulchre, I forgot the exact definition of a sepulcher, but I think it's like a, uh, like a mausoleum grave thing. Like, I'm thinking like a dusty, uh, like concrete underground thing where bodies would be stored, something like that. And served with a drop of milk that's almost 
curdled and turned sour. Ugh. You must wait a little longer. Ah, okay. I want to taste all the blends of tea. Let's speak to Melusine Murgatroyd. She single-handedly runs both the family business and the family business. Unless you count the small gaggle of overworked and underpaid maids, which Melusine does not. Wait, why does Melusine not count them? Hmm, I guess they're an asshole. Smelling faintly of burned hair, she tinkers with the latest invention intended to be her ticket out of both this no horse town and her father's control. Eyebrows, she confirms, are a small price to pay for scientific progress. <laughs> okay, she's sounding a lot more cool. So she doesn't want to run this place, or be here, or be around her father. And she also likes to tinker and make stuff. Okay. I want them on board. Can I take them on board? So let's uh, look at their inventions. Her workshop has slowly taken over the back room of the salon. Millsign glows with pride as you examine her mostly untested inventions. The clockwork lens array that offers superhuman levels of telescopic sight. Provided you can insert all six sharp brass hooks under your eyelids. <laughs> the internal combustion privy. Ideal for handling unpleasant waste products and warming whatever's left of your house after the inevitable explosion. An automated pickaxe capable of striking Earth seven times a second. Melisai nods, irritated. Pity about the minor bone-shattering issue. <laughs> the only thing she won't let you poke at is a twisted arrangement of glassware and electricity in the corner. Uh, that's not mine. Uh, not entirely. I'm still working on that. Complicated. You know if you know. If you don't, I shouldn't say. Traits by intelligence with Melosine. Two uncanny specimens. For a savage secret. Huh. I mean, I already have so many savage secrets, and I only have two uncanny specimens, and I'm going to have to use both of them. Which I don't like. But at the same time, I am curious what they have to say. Yeah, let's do it. Nobody knows the latest happenings, like a Murgatroyd. And she's always interested in unusual finds. Melsine accepts your finds and presents the fruits of her own eavesdropping. M. Uh, Bazal gets agent seen heading for Port Prosper. New murmurs of sedition after Windware's latest incident. Assorted snippets from as far as the Blue Kingdom. You make careful notes and file them away for future exploitation. Yeah, I've got 20 savage secrets. That is incredible. A large amount of that came from Kirillin. Yeah, I don't know what the M means. Maybe Mr. Because someone actually in the comments told me that there was somebody whose uh, like title before their name, I think was M-M-E period. And I didn't know what that was. And apparently that's a way of saying, uh, I think it was Mrs. or something like that. I think it was Mrs. Yeah, I wonder if we can take them with us at some point. Should I try to seek a claim right now? Yes, actually, let's do it. <laughs> 